thanks for having me and inviting me to, to talk about brain trust. Um, most of my career has been spent in financial services and in the um, insurance industry. I spent a good amount of time at Cigna um, and uh, about the last 10 plus years at Guardian Life. Um, both on the business side and in executive HR roles. And from an HR perspective, I really was focused on driving large-scale transformations where business strategy um, meets talent strategy, and each one of those become part and parcel of the other. And so I was able to probably in the last five years kind of parlay that into um, being part of the executive team who was kind of charged on doubling down on an investment in a digital-to-consumer business channel. Mm -hmm. And we had two mandates, you know, one being um, grow that business and two being kind of taking the learnings and operationalizing those um, into the rest of the company. Right now I'm leading, um, I launched an MVP, ran a PL, launched an MVP, which is now I'm leading the strategy around using that platform um, as potentially the, the membership platform for the company. Wonderful, thanks so much for sharing the background. You know, a, a lot of companies right now are, are struggling with big transitions, right? Um, and going into kind of this 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 next year, talk to me a, a little bit about like what are the, what are the two or three biggest challenges that you're facing right now, um, in, you know, in the work that you're doing? Yeah, so not unlike um, what you've 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 all touched on. Um, number one, I would say competitiveness and the costs associated with it. So as we're thinking about our strategy, and in particular for for me and what I'm trying to drive in terms of um, the company strategy to move from being a traditional insurer and a um, and a trusted advisor to be a champion of well-being. You know, we don't have the um, we're not the only ones um, looking to be seen that way in today's world. And so, how do we um, kind of establish not only our right to play but our right to win? Um, and then internally, it's all about what what everyone or lots of people are experiencing in terms of costs and expenses and then talent, making sure that we have the right people, especially in the digital space, um, to be able to deliver on on pretty big challenges. Well, so it sounds like, you know, uh, both positioning challenges in the market, like kind of carving out your spot and then also like finding, you know, finding the, the right people to help you on that journey. Can you talk a little bit about maybe solutions uh, on the on the on finding the right people to help you on that journey? I'm, you know, I'm sure we're, we're one piece of a bigger puzzle, but I'd love to hear your kind of perspectives of the landscape. Yeah. And so so like I said, about four or five years ago, when we started to we, when we started to operate and we had the kind of the this mandate to operate as a startup within a bigger company. And so I think it kind of started there because it gave us the um, and, and not a bigger company, but a bigger corporate company. And it kind of gave us the freedom and the flexibility along with the extreme accountability um, to deliver. And so what we we developed is this ta talent model, three pronged talent model where we had our full time staff. Um, but we knew that we needed to close some very, very significant um, capability gaps. Um, mm -hmm. And we needed to move faster and we needed to um, actually, you know, raise the bar for yeah. our for our talent. And so second prong was really that freelance, um, which I'll which I'll come back to. But the other, you know, the three, the third part was like sometimes you need to, for example, hire a dev shop to get something done. You know, you've got three months, no matter how many people it's going to take to do it. Um, so and we started to use that less and less, the more successful the freelance prong became. And with brain trust being a very big, very big part of that. And, and maybe you can go kind of go back in the rewind machine, you know, uh, like you know, trying out something new, especially new talent models, you know, a user own talent model, even maybe it's probably, you know, given that we're the first one is probably, you know, creates a little bit of anxiety for, for, you know, a corporation that's trying to move fast and reduce risk. Can you talk a little bit about like maybe what you found valuable or what, what stood out for you as you were, as you were navigating that challenge uh, in the early days? I, I became intrigued. It's actually, I, I was kind of thinking about this. How did I even, you know, become aware of brain trust? And I remember it was through Grady and being in a network with Grady and, and kind of doing some research when we knew that we needed to operate a bit differently um, and use and kind of like flip our model. on yeah. the um, And so in doing the research and kind of, I was just intrigued by the value prop. I was intrigued by kind of changing the way work works. I was intrigued by the user model where the transparency and having spent some time in HR, like knowing that it's just was it just wasn't right. Like there wasn't mm -hmm. transparency on the talent network on the part of the freelancer, 
and for the for the hiring manager and certainly for the company. And so talked with Grady and 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 there was some, you know, kind of apprehension. We had the benefit of um of being able to kind of skirt some corporate processes yeah. in the very beginning because we sort of had this um, you know, protected business unit status. So it was really up to um a very, you know, myself and a couple of other people to be able to say, let's give this a try. And we have never ever looked back. Um, yeah. and, uh, brain trust has been, and, and we have used a couple of others. The corporation obviously uses a, a few others. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm, I, I think brain trust is, um, especially for the, the, the kinds of roles that you fill and the talent, um, that, that you've brought to us has been a real win. Wonderful. Well, you know, listen, one of the interesting things that we've seen with you and, and, and actually many of our, our other customers has been they kind of start as customers and then they become these kind of like informal ambassadors, right? Yeah. Um, it was like, you know, sh spreading the word, spreading the mission um, and, and kind of helping the movement. You know, you've referred a bunch of people to Brain Trust, not just, you know, within, within your own organization, but but in, in many other organizations. Maybe you could share like, um, how do you, you know, how do you share the story with them? And maybe what's, you know, what, what have you heard from the, the, the people that you've referred to Brain Trust? Okay, so, so I first... Um... I really first talk about the talent and um, in my experience and in our ex collective experience um, on my, on my team and our leadership team, um, we, we've just found that the talent is at the same level and most often above um, where, we, what we get from other, um, uh, from other networks. Yeah. Um, what I find though that, and I really believe um, is that the reason for that is because of your kind of the whole user owned model. So it's not, you know, that same freelancer might be on multiple networks, yep. um, but I believe that um, they are better for having been, for having been part of kind of the, the, the placement through brain trust yep. to guardian and so that's part of what i kind of say as the real value proposition um because the quality of talent is first um the whole way you operate um really i think drives that quality of talent and there's there's flexibility there's the transparency and cost there's the efficiency that we're able to 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 drive it's there's there's multiple kind of you know secondary benefits and why I think we've had such success, but that, but, but I think all of those things kind of drive that, that quality of talent where you're differentiating yourself. Well, you know, it's great to hear from you. And, and I think a lot of other leaders benefit from, from hearing about your really innovative perspective, like, you know, trying, solving a really challenging problem with, you know, limited resources within a corporation expected to be kind of a startup within a much larger org. And then navigating, like, how do we actually find these people maybe that we've never had to find before in a really short period of time without the huge, you know, uh, recruiting arm behind you. So I think it's, it's great for, for you to share that and for other, other folks to hear that it is, you know, it is possible. I think sometimes they, people who, who, um, are hesitant, it's mostly because they, um, have worked with the same kind of provider for, uh, for a long period of time. And, um, and they're worried that, oh, this this relatively new startup is not going to be kind of flexible with our corporate kind of processes, especially when they hear me say, like, that's how we started. Um, yeah. But I reassure them that that you all have been very flexible. We've had, you know, bumps in the road, but never have we felt like, oh, this is not somebody who's going to kind of be flexible and move around that. We've been through that process of, you know, vendor selection and making sure that you're a corporate vendor and all of that kind of stuff. And never has it been, uh, never has it been an issue. So. Well, uh, Carol, thank you so much for, you know, for being one of the the early partners for us, for being a huge champion uh, and also for taking time to to share your experience with, with some of our other customers today. Thanks for having me.